I know that of, out of a hundred trades, I'll win 80 to 85 of them. So I never get too caught up um, on the losses. And as a leader, my job is to teach the stream that, to teach the audience that, and let them understand that, you know, this whole, you have to kind of switch your, or redefine what losing means to you, right? And you're not a loser. It's just the probability didn't play out on that trade. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Forex Beginner Podcast. It's your boy Calvin, the new trader, checking in. You already know what time it is. Time for another Grand Slamming interview. Today, he is known because it is time to eat, right? And when we open up those charts, everybody knows it's eating time, but we're looking to eat. And he is best known for that slogan. He's on YouTube. He's streaming live, but he's not just streaming, trading, and making money. He's doing a lot of other things that we're going get into uh this brother has a spirit that i connect with uh his genuine love for men for families and seeing people grow in their relationship with god we just connect on that level so well already ladies and gentlemen we got nick in the building what's going on nick what's up calvin hey it's good to be here today man as i was telling you pre uh pre-recording that I'm a big fan, man. I've been watching your stuff. And when I got the message from you, I said, you know what? That's a podcast that I'd be willing to do, right? Not every podcast you want to jump on, but this was a good one. I knew we our morals lined up. And uh, man, I'm excited for this conversation, brother. So thanks for having me. Man, first off, I appreciate you so much. I really appreciate the fact that you're humble enough to say, man, listen, I see what you're doing. And I just want to say I'm a huge fan of what you're doing. I also um, just want to give a huge shout out to a friend of mine who actually reached out to me, Gio. He actually reached out to me and he was like, yo, you need to check this guy out. He is fire. He's saving people, uh, helping people, all that type of stuff. I was like, he's saving people. He was like, well, you know what I mean? He's leading people to Christ. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, cool. So I'm going to check him out. So definitely want to give a big shout out to Gino. Uh, but bro, I want to jump in here. When you hear the name Nick Stewart, right? When you hear your name being mm -hmm. called, what do you think about yourself? Yeah, that's a great question, man. And um, one thing I think about myself is um, I am willing to put in work. Um, I'm willing to be persistent. I'm willing. Uh, I think if my mom could rename me, um, my middle name would be Persistence. Because that's one thing I understand about successful people is, you know, when you dive into something, you're not going to understand these things right away. Whatever it is, trading is just what we're talking about. But if it's a new language, if it's a, a new instrument, right, if it's a new sport, anything that you dive into, you have to understand that there's a sowing and a reaping process, right? And you have to be persistent within that and, under, you know, kind of understand and, and get the expectations down right. So, um, you know, I would say a uh, young entrepreneur, um, underdog, right? Doubted most of my life, but um, kept that persistence, kept that vision crystal clear, and um, you know, now we're starting to gain a little bit. We're not, we're we're nothing to where we want to be, yeah. But we're getting some traction now, yeah. I love that. You know, that's my slogan, right? Like, out of all the progress. I share and talk about, I'm always like, but we're nowhere near where we're going. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you got introduced to Forex, it seems like to me, this was the perfect sport for you, right? Considered the oh, underdog, yeah. having that persistence in you to continue to fight until you figure things out. So how did that come into yeah. your life? And what about it intrigued you the most? Yeah. So a um, little backstory for me, I, um, I was a big athlete growing up. So I played a lot of baseball, a lot of sports growing up. And, um, you know, just I... I developed that player coach mentality. And from there, I got into network marketing. And coming from network marketing, that really gave me a lot of grit, right? That really kind of developed a lot of that persistence in me. And, you know, that's where I found out that I was willing to put in the work, even outside of sports. I wasn't a big job guy my whole life. I really didn't commit to any solid career path or job or anything. I kind of, I was that guy who just jumped from job to job, you know? But um, my network marketing, I was comp my network marketing business, I was completely sold out to. I seen the vision, I seen where I could be, and I was just bulldog mentality for about eight years. And during those eight years, you know, I thought I was doing that for money, but I got so much more than money out of that experience. And you know, I knew I was willing to put in the work. Um, I started to develop a lot of those successful habits and skill sets, and I just didn't quite find the results I was looking for. Um, and w again, going back to one thing I know about me is I'm willing to put in the work and I did in that, in that field, but it had a lot to do with other people, right. And other people kind of 
um, catching on to that dream, catching on to that vision of where we wanted to go. And, you know, I noticed that over the years, um, you know, my success in a way kind of depended on other people. So as I was grinding, grinding, grinding and really not getting the traction, I felt like my tires just kept spinning and spinning and spinning. Right. Um, I started to look around and, you know, I seen Forex. Right. And I seen, hey, this is, uh, you know, something that it's basically you against the charts. And I knew that I was willing to put in the time, put in the work. And I said, hey, look, at this is an opportunity for me to get my full potential. I don't you know, this guy doesn't need to join or this guy doesn't need to stick around or believe in me. If I can just lock in on these charts, I know what I'm worth. I know I'll be willing to go out there and get it. So it was kind of like diving into like an individual sport, right? After leaving like a a team sport. And, um, and I just put my back against the wall. You know, I knew I can count on my work ethic and, you know, that's kind of how I first got introduced is just by saying, you know what, this, if it's to be, it's up to me. And um, if I'm willing to put in the time, I can go out and get it. So that's kind of like what opened the door for me into the uh, into the Forex space. You mentioned that you were in network marketing. How did that prepare you for what was next in life? Man, that changed the game. Network marketing, network marketing completely changed my life. I learned about leadership. Uh, I think that was the biggest one was leadership. I learned about persistence again. Right. Um, I learned about people skills. Right. Which has helped me helping me out a lot today. Right. Um, I I always I developed a love for people in network marketing. Um, I grew up from an average family. My uh, my dad said, you know, we're at the top. And I said, at the top of what? You know, he said, we're all (laughs) at the top of the bottom, man. You know, we're right there. Um, So, you know, I grew up average, you know, I had great parents but just average, not nine to five mentality, um, thought process and, um, you know, finding mentorship. And that's what network marketing really was for me. It was mentorship. It was the school of life. You know, I didn't go to college or anything. So I, I planted my stake there and I've, I got really close with a couple really solid guys and they took me under their wing and, and mentored me. And it really prepared me for trading, um, patience, discipline, right? Um, Not getting too high, not getting too low on the emotion scale. Um, These are things that that really pay are paying off now that I didn't even know why I was learning them uh, back then. And they seem to play an incredible role now in my ability to uh, keep my emotions in check, um, set goals and patiently work, right? What kind of like, I like to call it aggressive patience, Mm. where you're aggressive with the work, but you're patient with the results, right? Otherwise we can kind of tend to get ahead of ourselves. Um, So those are probably the main takeaways um, that I've, that I got from network marketing to get me to where I am today. And those were just, those were huge, man. Those are worth any amount of whatever amount of money you're thinking of it times it by 10, because that little decade right there, and me and my wife talk about this all the time because she built that business with me. So we've been partners and running this thing up since we're, you know, 20 years old. And, um, you know, that, that built everything within me to kind of set me up for success for the future. So we always talk about, Hey, that one decade set us and our kids up now for the rest of our lives. So yeah, love network marketing, man. Really, really, really loved it. That's super dope. How long you been married? Uh, four years. Four years. Awesome. And how yeah. many children do you have? Uh, we got two li- two kids now and one on the way. So all little kids. My daughter's two. She's the oldest. Then we got a one-year-old little guy. And then we're not sure, sure what we're having yet. But yeah, we got another one coming. Man, my man Nick doing more than just <laughs> trading, y'all. He getting busy. He doing more than just trading. So, yeah. so we got how- most, as we would say. <laughs> <laughs> so how is that dynamic? So I got two boys. They're like two and a half mm. years apart. When the oldest was like three and then the youngest was like approaching one where it started mm. to get a little like, you know, me and my wife would just kind of pass them. Like, you know, it, it gets to the point where we get annoyed yeah, yeah. and we're like, okay, it's your turn. So for you, like oh, you, yeah. you literally got babies. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. How is that dynamic for you and your wife? <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, man. It's a total shift up in in lifestyle and you know, the first thing, well, one of the first things my wife said when when we found out that she was pregnant again was, "Honey, we're outnumbered." Right? So now now we're outnumbered, right? So Facts. it's it's one thing to have a 2-year-old and then it's another thing now to have, you know, a little 1-year-old guy who's now running all around the place and you got to watch him and um, you know, you you pretty much learn to keep your head on a swivel, but we love it. We enjoy it. 
we uh, we prayed for these moments before we ever had kids. Um, and you know, to be free with our kids today, it's a dream come true to be able to see the first walks, the first talks, the first this, the first that um, is a such a blessing. So it can get a little crazy at times, but during those times, we always sit back and think, you know, man, we prayed for this. You know, what what a blessing. How grateful, how grateful are we? You know, so. But other than that, it's crazy, crazy house. You decide that you want to start trading. How did this journey start? How did you learn? What did you do once you got introduced to it? How did you go about the education part of getting into this skill set? Yeah, good question. So check this out. So pretty much what happened was I was in uh, network marketing, obviously, as you know, and super passionate about. I'm talking when I was in those meetings, there wasn't a thing that could distract me. I don't care if there was a party. I don't care if there was a car show. I was, I'm pretty big in cars and bikes and all that stuff. I don't care, right? I was locked in because I knew my future self would thank me. And what happened was, as I was in those meetings, I started thinking about trading. You know, And this never happened to me before, never. And that was a sign for me. And that's when I started praying about it right and asking for some sort of discernment and guidance and you know i just kept i couldn't get trading i couldn't get it out of my mind man could not get it out no matter what and for me to think about that while actually in in a meeting like and being a speaker at the meeting too at that i was thinking whoa there may be a shift going on here you know so i started praying about it and you know eventually a, a friend of mine that i that i really admire his name is matt he was uh he was a part of the i am academy Mm-hmm. Um, and remember, you know, I want to go into some sort of familiar territory. So I liked trading, but I liked that they were part of a network marketing company. It was a little bit familiar for me and something that I'm used to. So after a lot of praying, um, a lot, a lot of like, uh, you know, emotional decision because the, the, the men who I learned from, they really built me, right? I, f- I truly believe I was built on the assembly line of their mentorship. I like the way and you said that. I hard- like that. Yeah, yeah, I like really. That. I really was. They really put me together. And, um, you know, to leave that group was by far probably the hardest decision I ever had to make. Mm. Um, a lot of crying, right? A lot of praying, like some serious stuff here. And, you know, uh, God told me, hey, it's time, you know, it's time. They've served the purpose in your life. I still talk with them today. They still mentor me today. Great guys. Uh, but it's time to move. And, um, I said, perfect. So, you know, I moved into the unknown. I wasn't sure if trading was actually going to be the thing for me or if it was going to be something else. And, um, you know, just started to dive into it, uh, looked online, looked around on, you know, YouTube and, found a few guys, got a few courses. I think my journey begins like everyone else, right? We try and look for a signal provider and, you know, we, I was waking up at four in the morning, got by, by GJ now, you know, and I was just, <laughs> the signal was sent that at like three forty, but I wasn't entering it until like, you know, four forty, and thinking that I got the same entry as everyone else. I had no, I no idea how this stuff worked, you know? Yeah. And, uh, once I figured out that that didn't work, um, you know, I kind of moved away from IM Academy. I think they were, I think they're a great company in general. A lot of people like to bash them, but bro, they put me on like Facts. they, and they, all they do is sell education, Forex education. So, you know, they got my foot in the door. They helped me kind of understand like what trading was all about. But then I realized, you know what, I, I want to learn this on my own. So I started looking for other, other um, teachers that I could find that were kind of like teaching people how to independently trade. And, um, and that was right around COVID, right? Right around when the, when the, uh, pandemic went down and everything was getting shut down. And, um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to take this time. And while the whole world shut down and I'm going to build my foundation for the knowledge here on the charts. And that's really how it all began. You said a lot of things there that I love. One thing that I'm admiring about you nick and i'm trying to focus on the camera but i really want to look over here and just look you in your eyes and talk but uh, bro like i'm really connecting with you and as you answer my questions i'm learning more about you but i love the way that you honor everybody that has poured into you every situation or every experience you've had i love the way you speak on it with honor with gratitude i love that bro because that just shows the humility and just how grateful you are. And bro, what I like stand on, I understand that everybody isn't going to be in my life for a lifetime. It's just, that's just how it is. 
but everybody that has come into my life has helped me become the man that I am today. Some mm. more than others, but everybody that has been a part of my life, even if they did something wrong to me, they played a part in who I am today. And so yeah. I just love to hear you give knowledge, respect, and honor to those that have been a part of your development as you've gotten to this point. So I just want to throw that out there. But now, so it's 2020 and you're using this time to kind of build, you're getting your foundation yep. set, right? When yep. do you get to the point where you finally figure out that strategies just ain't going to work and you just got to mm. follow market structure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did you get to that yeah. point? <laughs> yeah. So that was unfor <laughs> unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for me, that happened after blowing about 15 accounts and about $40,000 in the markets. Wow. You know, then it finally hit me and said, all right, Nick, wake up here. If something's going to change and you've got to change something. And, um, that kind of, that, that was more so about two years ago now, wow. uh, where the flip kind of switched for me. And that was right around, you know, obviously the time, like my daughter was being born and I understood that there was, um, you know, there was bit, it was bigger than me. Right. And I can't just keep messing around. I had some money saved up, you know, that I was blowing through, but, um, I realized, Hey, if I don't get it together, well, my wife and I may have to go back to work and mm. that scared the div living daylights out of me. Come on, bro. So I yeah, feel, I finally yo, realized. I felt the dark cloud. As you say, I felt like a dark <laughs> cloud coming over my shoulder. Word. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. For real. That's how I felt. Like that's the nightmare for me. You know, some people are motivated by the dream. Others are motivated by the nightmare. I think I'm a little motivated by both, but the nightmare really gets me going. Right. Cause I don't want to, and, and to this day, I don't want to go back to that life. Right. So, um, I just do whatever I can to keep going. But I think, um, I think that was kind of the turning point for me. And, um, I said, you know what, I got a good system. I got a good playbook. I just got to be disciplined to it. And I think that's the hidden, hidden, gem right there for all traders is that guess what gang every system works Facts. they all work every strategy works the the only um variable is you right will you work will you stay consistent and will you find out the little nuances and the little the little things right that most people don't look at are you willing to dive in and figure out how to tailor that system um, to your pair or to your lifestyle or to the way you trade. And um, it was just about being, cons you know, doing what I knew I was supposed to be doing and doing it consistently. Yeah, that's so powerful, bro. That's so powerful. So tell me this in terms of your system of trading, because I've seen mm -hmm. you do live trading on YouTube, right? For those that don't yeah. know, he's on YouTube um, and he's doing live streaming, live trading. So I've seen you do that. And yeah. when I see you, it seems like you're just reading market structure. You're doing a top down mm -hmm. analysis. You're reading where the trend is for the week, the day, and then you're coming down time frame by time frame. And then you're looking for areas of interest where the market is more likely to go in that direction. And then you're looking for those trading ranges where you can fill those ranges and get to your profit target. So is that a like a summary of how you approach the market or is it a well uh, defined system in your mind that you go through when you're doing all those steps? Yeah, no, you, that's pretty, pretty well defined right there. Um, okay. uh, one thing about me is I'm, I like to take, I'm not that smart, right? So I'll admit that. And I like to take things that are, I think this is a little bit of a superpower that I have, right? I can take things that are really complicated and break them down in their most simplest form. And that's what I've been able to do with trading and the way I trade and the way I view the markets is very simple. Like if you go to my my live streams, you'll see the majority of the time there may be like four lines up there, right? One where I'm kind of boxing off any sort of consolidation. And then there's ranges where I look to trade in. So me personally, I like to hunt down volume. Um, and when volume, so I don't just chase volume. But if my setup shows up during volume and it's in a clean range, that's when I say, okay, let's lock this in here. We may have an opportunity and we'll just look to fill that range. I don't, I don't need the big, I don't need the whole pie. I just need a piece of it. And yeah. a piece of it every single day gets me to the way I live now and the way I want to live in the future. And that's all I need, right? I let the markets kind of make the decision and I just ride the wave, grab my piece and get out. I love it. I love it. So talk to me about yeah. this, man, because we're getting into it. How do you do? So yeah. you're trading live, right? And obviously mm -hmm. every day is not a winning day. 
How do you mm-hmm. deal with those losses? Because, like, when you're trading live, those losses are not just losses. Like, they're multiplied losses because of the audience. Like, you got yeah. hundreds of – you got thousands of people on a live stream. Yeah. You know what I mean? So how do you handle your losses, and how have you learned to adapt to now, okay, I've learned how to handle losses. Now I got to learn how to handle losses publicly. Yeah, good question. Good question. So uh, my my answer may be a little different, but I handle losses the same way I handle wins. Mm. Just another trade. Mm. Just another trade. Every trade, whether I win or lose, it's just on to the next one. Um, I, I, I always like to say, if you don't celebrate your wins too much, you won't dwell on your losses too much. And I understand that trading is a probability game. I understand that there's loss as a part of this. And I just need to do my best at staying disciplined to my playbook because my playbook does the winning and the losing, not me. Right. So I tell the, tell the stream this often. It's like, if you can just rely on the playbook, right? So if you take a loss, most people associate with if they take a loss, they're a loser. Right. And that's totally not the case. Right. Most people, they've, They've got these degrees, they've got these great careers, great families, and then they take a couple of losses in the market and think like they're a loser, you know, and they're, yeah. you're not a loser, right? Your, your playbook lost that trade, not you. It was just the probability of the setup playing out. So same thing with the win, right? If you won, don't jump up and down, man. You didn't really do anything special. Like mm. we expected price to go there, right? And it was just a playbook position. So one thing I like to keep in mind is the next 100 trades mentality. And what I mean by that is today's trade doesn't really matter that much. What matters is the results over the next 100 trades. And I know that my system pretty accurately over the last two and a half years has given me roughly about an 80 to like an 85% win rate. So I know that out of 100 trades, I'll win 80 to 85 of them. So I never get too caught up um, on the losses. And as a leader, my job is to teach the stream that, to teach the audience that, and let them understand that, you know, this whole, you have to kind of switch your or redefine what losing means to you, right? And you're not a loser. It's just the probability didn't play out on that trade. So that's all. You know, um, we never we never celebrate our wins. We never dwell on our losses because we understand very simply that the outcome of any given trade is random. Yeah. It's like rolling a die, right? Like if we were gonna roll a die a hundred times, and all we all we were looking to was to avoid rolling a two, mm. right? We have an edge, meaning that there's more numbers on the die. Same thing with trading. We have an edge, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to roll a two 19, 20, 22 times out of that hundred. And guess what? Sometimes that two may pop up two or three times in a row. Mm. So you have to understand that every single outcome of every trade is random. It doesn't matter if it's got an, we have one setup that has a 92% win rate, but guess what? It's not a hundred, right? So you just got to kind of you know, accept those rules, accept that trading is about probability. And if you can just move forward thinking in in probabilities, it'll be a game changer for you and the future of your trading. So that's kind of like what I live by and what I like to teach the guys and girls. That's so good. So good. So talk to me about trading time. So have you ever dabbled with London Open or trading before New York Open? Trading times are huge. Um, I think more traders should probably put some importance on that. Because, you know, the 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 average trader just thinks they could open up a chart whenever, look at some price. And, you know, some strategies do call for that. But um, I did trade London uh, before I had kids, obviously. And then, um, you know, I trade some pound pairs and it was a different trading style. But, you know, once I uh, once I started getting grounded in in trading the New York session, um, I feel like that was the best move I made. Right. To stick with one session. Well, I, I usually, I, most of my trades, about 85% of my trades are taken on gold. Um, so we've really dialed in on gold and I don't want to say we've mastered the session, but we've gotten it damn near, damn near close. Right. So we understand, I understand how the session moves. And I always tell people, if you're going to pick a session, pick one that's going to flow with your life. Right. Like, you know, I live on the East coast in Florida here, just like you. And yep. Um, you know, I, I sleep during the London session for the most part, you know, I got kids and during the Asian session, I'll peek here and there, but you know, I, I like to come to the desk. I like to sit down and do a job. And then when that job's done, I like to get on with my day. And that, that usually, uh, my trading session, it 
goes from about 6.30 a.m. Eastern, pre-New York, mm-hmm. to about 10.30, right around like London close, somewhere in between that time. And, you know, it's my job to just look for positions during that time. If we find some, great. We take a win or a loss. If not, we call it a no trade day and we just come back tomorrow. So I think sessions are very important. I think it's good to find a session and a pair that's going to, you know, um, uh, agree with your lifestyle as well. And um, and then we just hunt the volume down there. So you talk about volume a lot. So can you explain yeah. what you mm-hmm. mean by volume? This is a podcast works being a podcast predominantly for new beginner and developing traders. So what do you mean mm-hmm. by volume and how can we hunt it down and how can we spot it when we see it? Yeah, good question. So volume is um is like the fuel for my trading style. So I like to look for volume. And, and what I mean by volume is that's when a lot of a lot of movements going to happen. So these are these times are going to happen during like uh, pre New York or the New York Open, right? Or the New York Stock Exchange Open. Um, there's also another one, the Commodity Exchange Open, where you'll get a really really nice push around like 8:20 a.m. Eastern. So these are these are times during the session which we highlighted, and we understand. Hey, if there's a If there's a best time to take our position, it's going to be during times of volume. So what we'll do is we'll we'll wait on the NY Open. We'll wait on the NYSE Open. And if you look at our spreadsheet, you'll find that most of our trades and most of our our setups tend to play out during volume. So volume plus our setup, it it, it complements each other so perfectly for a winning trade. So usually what we'll do is we'll wait on those session opens. And then try and, you know, get into some positions then and let that volume take us to the promised land. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. You're in the market at 6 a.m. That's when you start your um, stream and you start looking at the market. We we usually start around like 630, 645. I'll tend to get on the charts. I have a whole morning routine. Like, you know, I usually get up around 4 a.m., but I won't really hit the charts until about 6, 6.15 is when I'll kind of turn the computer on and start to get into work mode, you know? And um, yeah, so anywhere between like 6, 6.15 and like 11 a.m. Eastern, you know, is when we, is when I'll get on the charts and look for positions. Okay. So how yeah. often are you taking trades before that NY open? Not too often. Uh, a lot of times that'll change up with the, um, with the quarters and where we're at in terms of, you know, what month it is and, you know, what's going on, but very, I don't think we've really taken many trades before the NY open here in about like two, maybe even three months. So yeah, um, we'll typically tend because you'll have those moves happen during London. And then what'll happen is you'll get the retracements or the consolidation during that pre New York time. So I mainly like to be on there to be set up, to be ready to go, to understand exactly where, where I'm looking to trade in. And then once that, that session open and that volume comes in, that's when I kind of, you know, get up on my seat and, you know, start looking for, you know, hunting down those positions. So in terms of risk to reward, right? We hear a lot about make sure you're getting a great risk to reward. Make sure you're not risking more than you're looking to make. What are your thoughts Mm -hmm. on risk to reward? How do you approach that game? Yeah, I I love that question. Um, And this is a question that we get all the time, every single day on, on the live stream, because for me, Anything over a one to one is good money, um, be, be, and the reason it is is because our win rate is so high. Yeah, you go right. So when when you have a high win rate, you don't necessarily need a crazy risk to reward. So as long as it's giving me a one to one, I'll take more than that. But as long as I got a one to one, that's a good trade for me. Now everyone's system's a little bit different, right? Um, and everyone's system again works, and you know they they do it their own way. But when I hear traders say, hey, I need a one to four, otherwise I don't get in, that tells me that their win rate is not that good, you know? And they, you know, maybe the system ain't ain't that good, right? Because I like to win. I don't know about you. I love to win. Um, and I want to see trades win because when you, and, and here's another thing, the way we trade is we'll take 10, 15, 20 pips where most traders, they'll get caught holding the bag because they didn't want to, you know, close right there they wanted the yep. full move and you know <laughs> we're okay with taking or i'm okay with taking 15 pips and calling it a day because when you win you feel good yeah right when you feel good you're excited about what you do when you're excited about what you do you'll be consistent every day when you're consistent every day you'll you'll let those probabilities play out and the results will be there so i'm 
all about stacking wins, whether that's on the markets, whether that's in your personal life, whatever, right? I'm all about stacking wins. And, you know, every now and then we'll take a loss and sometimes it'll hit our full stop, but it, it, it doesn't compare to the eight or nine wins that we just took, yeah. right? So I always say, you know, RR, as long as you got a high win rate, um, you, all you need is a one, one, but if, if your win rate isn't there and you know, you're only winning 50, 40 or, you know, so percent of your trades, then yeah, you may want to look into, you know, having that bigger risk to reward, but, uh, for the way we trade, we don't really need it. Um, you know, we're pretty good on a, on the win rate and stacking wins. If you, if you, uh, see on any of my trades, I take on the live stream, every trade is planned, right? Every trade is planned out. So it's not like we're just closing because we want to take a win, right? And we're in profit. There's, um, specific, uh, parameters that we're trading by. So, you know, I always have a point where I like to go break even, um, and, and, that's not up to me. That's all up to the markets. And I always say, you got to look left, right? You got to look left. You got to see where the market structure is. And then, you know, that's when you make decisions. So I never make any like impulsive, emotional decisions. It's all logically and technically planned out before the trade. So, you know, we'll go break even. Let's just, as an example, 15 pips. And then let's say we're going to hold till, you know, 20, 25 pips. So once we get to that break even point, well, guess what? Now our RR is on another level, right? Because now we're not risking anything with the potential for all the gains. So, you know, I think if if you can plan your trade and then just stick to trading that plan um, and closing those partials, not when you want to, but when the market tells you to, that's how you just stay dialed in and on track and you're willing to show up every day and, and see what opportunities are ahead of you. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. So talk to us yeah. about looking to the left, right? Mm -hmm. Previous price movement from the past. How important is past data to future uh, predictions and in terms of analyzing where you are and, and, and like knowing where to place that break even and where to place that TP, how important is that? And how do we develop a mind to start paying attention to those things? Yeah, it, it's extremely important because as traders, all we have is previous data to go to base our, our analysis off, right? Yeah. Some traders use indicators and things like that, but again, those aren't as strong as actual da data, right? So that data to the left will get you right. I heard someone say it on a podcast. He said, I look left to get right. You know, and, <laughs> and it, I resonate with that, man, because it's so funny. I don't look too deep into the, cause remember I'm, I'm in a way like a scalper, right? So I, I'm, I'm in positions for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, sometimes an hour max, um, so every, all the information is kind of right there for me. Now, if I need to dig back a little bit, I will and, um, and find these points. And I think it's so important because I can't even tell me, tell you how many times we, we hit our partial TP line, boom, price rejected right off of that. Just like in the past, almost precision. Right. And I, one of the guys I learned from early on was Swaggy C. So shout out to Swaggy. Um, and he really gave me, um, a good understanding about how the market is art, right? The market is art and it does things, right? And it's going to, you know, look left and see what its buddies did in the past. And it's going to want to go down in that area. Now, will it stay down there? We don't know, right? But it should get there. Yeah. So that's why we're so quick to say, hey, this is where we're going to secure some profits, right? This is where we're going to go break even and this is how we're going to manage everything. So I think it's, um, I think it's extremely important. And the best way to do that is to really, um, open up your charts and don't be lazy, right? A lot of traders are lazy, man. They just want to look at price action and convince themselves that this is a good trade for me. That was me when I was unprofitable, mm. right? That was unprofitable, Nick, but profitable, Nick, totally different, totally reversed. Now I look and I say, yo, whatever the market's willing to give me, I'm going to take that. I'm not going to have any ego involved in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to look left to get right. And wherever it is, it is right. If it's 10 pips, it's 10 pips. If it's 20 pips, it's 20. Um, but don't be lazy. Go back. Even if you can't see it, scroll back a little bit, because that's how a lot of traders get faked out is they're only looking at what's right in front of them. Mm -hmm. And if, if that's right in front of you, that's right in front of every other trader, That's right? True. So the real the real secret may be a little bit more to the left. And that has saved us so many times. I can't even tell you, bro, how many times that saved us where we would have gotten faked out 
Mm. with current levels but we look back just a little bit to find the most common you know the average medium there put our put our zone there saved us i mean i can't even tell you how many times so looking left to get right has been really really crucial in our win rate and you know the success that we've been having in other words get that highest paid plan on trading view so you can see everything (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly so yeah man um so much good stuff there, right? In terms of accounts, do you have any crazy account flipping stories? We often hear a lot of traders when they first get started, they have yeah. this insane, like, yeah, when I first started, I was, you know, I started with a hundred dollars and I turned it into five grand, 10 grand or whatever. Do you have any of yeah. those stories in your past or, or like on your journey that you have had take place? Yeah. Any crazy account I, flips? I, I wouldn't say I had any crazy account flips. Um, I was kind of in, you know, at one point, the Forex industry, that was like the thing, right? Like flip accounts. Uh, I, I started getting in when FTMO was getting pretty popular. The other prop firms weren't around just yet. Mm-hmm. But um, I would say, I, you know, nothing crazy in terms of winning um, because I blew a bunch of accounts, like $1,000 accounts, $1,500 accounts. And then I started going the funded route. And the funded route really started to help me um, you know, kind of like look away from the account flipping mm. to the professional approach to the markets. And uh, a lot of people don't like the funding company rules, but I I always like to look at life with a glass half full, right? So I think, hey, they're really good rules because they'll shape you into becoming a professional at this, right? Nice. And not a, just a, a an account flipper, which is fine. It takes a skill set to do that as well. But long-term profitable success, I think, happens when you approach the markets with professionalism and maturity. And that's really what the what the prop firms have helped me done. Now I blew a bunch of accounts to get there, but you know, they've ultimately shaped me into more of a mature and professional trader. Oh man, that's so good. So are you currently funded? And if you are, how much funding do you have in total? So many people are asking me, Calvin, are you still going to be trading with prop firms given all of this stuff that's going on? And are you still funded? And will you get new challenge accounts? And my answer to all of those questions is absolutely yes. Now, this is my personal opinion. I truly believe that trading for prop firms is still a great way to get that capital up. And you can take some of that capital and put it into your personal account and start building it from there. So personally, I just started another funded challenge with Blue Guardian. And the reason I rock with Blue Guardian and the reason I recommend Blue Guardian is for so many reasons. But number one is their ability to offer us a tool that helps us protect ourselves from violating our daily drawdown. The number one reason that traders like you and I fail funded challenges is not because we don't know how to trade, not because we don't have the right strategy. It's simply because we hit our daily drawdown, which means that either we're revenge trading, either we just don't know that we're Um, close to violating our challenge but all of that stuff is fixed with this one tool that blue guardian has available called the guardian protector you simply go into the back office you set a dollar amount limit or percentage limit and this guardian protector will stop you from breaching your account it will disable your account for the day that means no emotions no nothing and you can live to trade another day now when i saw this tool i said you know what this is a prop firm that is leveling the playing field so that we traders can have a good shot at actually passing the challenge to move on to the next stage. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the main reason why I rock with Blue Guardian. Something as simple as that is game changing for the trader that is disciplined, the trader that has a strategy, and the trader that is well prepared to take the challenge. So if that is you, if you're ready, you've been practicing your strategy, you got the data, you've been paper trading, and you are ready then listen, there's no other prop firm that I would recommend than Blue Guardian. On top of the Guardian Protector, you got 85% payout, which is one of the highest in the industry from day one when you get funded. You also have no restrictions on your trading. You can trade during news. You don't have to set a stop loss. You can hold over the weekend. So many great things with Blue Guardian. So to get 10% off your next challenge, use coupon code NEWTRADER, the number one. You'll get 10% off your next challenge. And there's a link in the description that you can click to get your funded journey started with Blue 
Guardian. Now let's get back to our interview. Yeah, so I got a hundred thousand um, dollars from uh, com- uh, with uh, my forex funds, and then I have uh, four hundred thousand dollars with the funded trader. Um, so that's what we're working with right now. They're they're both both companies have been great. Uh, I really can't complain about any of them. Um, you know what a time to be a trader, right? If you've got the skill set, they've got the money. Um, just don't mess with the, you know, the bootleg companies go with some of the bigger ones that have established themselves. But yeah, that's what I'm working with right now in terms of, um, you know, funding capital. Like I see funding and prop firms like a credit card, bro. Like literally Mm. you can literally create cash flow off of credit. You know what I mean? You like you, (laughs) you put up a challenge fee, you know, whatever that is, a couple hundred dollars, whatever it is. Right. And you just do what you do, use your skill set, work your plan, and in a month or two, you'll get that money back plus oh yeah, an endless line of cash flow after that. Yep. If you yeah. just keep doing what you did the first time. So for no me, brainer. bro, it's like I understand, like say what you want. It's a demo environment. They're not really taking your trades. I'm like, bro, this is credit that produces an everlasting stream of cash flow as long as you do what you're supposed to do. I don't care if the trades yeah. are taken live or not. If that money's hitting that deal account, like you just said, I ain't got no yeah. problems, bro. I ain't got no nope, problems. That's it. <laughs> now you're talking my language. There's no risk, right? There's no, when, when you fund up an account with, let's say $50,000, well, now your 50,000 liquid is, is in that account. So who knows what could happen with that broker, right? Most of the time we're straight, but you know, at the end of the day, your money now is all at risk. And um, you know, when you have a funded or, or when you have a live funded account, the only thing you really risked at the end of the day was that initial investment, which on your first payout you get back. Nice. So worst case, right? Worst case is that maybe you have a good month and the company doesn't pay you, but that's no risk to your actual liquid that you've built up, you know, in your whatever savings or investment account, that's just money. Yeah, it sucks. They're not going to pay you, but it's not like you just lost, you know, 50, 60, 70, $80,000 of your own money in a broker. So that's why I love it. You know, it's, it's risk-free at the end of the day, outside of that little investment. And, um, you know, you can leverage that big account, man. It's not like nothing like making, you know, a, a month salary on a 1% trade, you know, come on, bro. Come on, man. Who, <laughs> Man, don't even get me started on that. Uh, so how do you manage risk on those funded accounts? So are you trading funded accounts on your live stream or do you have a trade copier? How do you manage risk with your funded accounts? Yeah, so uh, we trade them right. We trade them live every morning um, on the live streams. We uh, I do have accounts linked to a copy trader. Um, so that way I'm not executing and doing a whole bunch of stuff on a whole bunch of different accounts. It's just one account hooked up to, a, you know, the rest of them are hooked up on a copy trader. And the way I go about risk is um, I use fixed lots. So I use um, 10 lots on my 100K account. I use 40 lots on my 400K account. I'm a bit aggressive. Um, my appetite for risk is a little higher than most. I like it. Right. So I'm I'm willing to get into trades. And here's the big thing is, Again, the win rate is very high and the win rate is high because I've done my homework, right? I've before I ever enter a trade, I've already done the homework for the, on this stuff. Like I'm never going to get into like a wishy-washy trade thinking, "Eh, you know, maybe we'll get in, maybe we won't." So that or maybe we'll win, maybe we won't, which is always the case, but I'm very confident in the positions I take based off of the homework I've done. Um, the, uh, the, the experience that I have in the markets at this point, pretty much trading gold every single morning for three, almost three years now. So I'm a bit heavy, I would say, I don't know, maybe it's heavy, maybe not, but you know, I use 10 lots and 40 lots and, um, typically my stop losses tend to be, you know, 20, 25 pips. It can vary, but, um, as long as I know I'm staying within that 5%, um, daily, uh, what do they call it? Daily drawdown. Drawdown. Yeah. Um, then I I know I'm straight. You know I know I'm straight. And there was actually one time where uh, where I actually took like a f- almost a four percent loss. Mm. And we we took a loss, and it's because I was uh messing around. I had a uh, the long the wrong lot size open. 
had a 34 lots on my on my 100k I account. Made, I made that I made that mistake <laughs> so many times, bro. <laughs> yeah. You I won't make that one again, you know? And um so on 10 pips I lost like 3.5% or almost 4 almost 4% on that trade. And then, you know, I didn't I never revenge trade. I'm I'm totally past all that. Um but a, a later on in the session another trade setup came and People were like, "Are you are you gonna are you serious? Like, are you gonna open up a ten lot?" And we had a really tight stop loss at the NYSE Open, where there was gonna be a lot of volume, and I just felt so good about this trade. Um, so I was risking about eight pips. So I was cutting myself pretty close to blowing that drawdown, but I understood I was still within the parameter if I did lose the trade. And I just let it rip on full confidence. And bro, we went on and took like a 40 or 50 pip win on that trade. Woo! So got yeah, it all back aggressive. in some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it all back. And um just I just trust my plan. You know, that's why I'm willing to kind of, you know, um put put high lot sizes or big lots out there. It's just because I've done the homework. I know, you know, I know what I know and and I'm confident in pretty much every single position I take. When you're calling trades in front of, you know, some sometimes some days we'll have three thousand people live, two twenty five hundred people live on the stream. So, you know, you got to be confident, right? You got to have that swag, and and uh, that all comes from being consistent behind the scenes and 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 doing the homework. I want to take that into my next question. What advice and what encouragement would you give somebody that's looking at your live streams and saying, Nick, yo, I would kill to be in your position. I would love to do what you're doing. What encouragement or what advice or what tips would you give them? Yeah, I would um I would say, you know, learn how to stay down until you really come up. Um, you know, learn how to maybe build the foundation for yourself. It's like in the um in the in uh airlines, right? Where they say, Hey, in case of an emergency, you know, first put your mask on before you can help others. And whether we're talking about trading, whether we're talking about marriage, whether we're talking about leadership, you wanna you wanna have the fruit on the tree before it's ready to pick right and <clears throat> excuse me um i always look at that in life and i say you know at one point i wasn't ready to handle the live streams i was profitable but i wasn't ready just yet right i still had to sit and be that mentee and watch my coach right and make sure that i was really on top of my game because you know for the live streams i take it very serious you know there's a lot of people's family's future is on the line and I care about their kids. I really do. I, I sometimes I joke around and say, you know, I, I know I'm just a YouTube guy to some use, but I really do care about your kids, right? I really do care about your future and, you know, I want to see you succeed. So it's one thing to want that for people, but if you don't know how to teach and you, you don't have some sort of um, consistency in your own game, then you're going to shoot yourself in the foot and you're also going to hurt them. And my intentions is always to, you know, be the best leader that I can be. And in order to be the leader, you've got to be willing to go through those trenches yourself, learn the game and not just be profitable one or two months, but get a stretch under your belt, right? St seek some consistency in, in the fruit. And then you can go start handing that fruit out to others, but don't try and prematurely, jump into this leadership position, right? A lot of leaders, they were they were followers for a long time. They they worked under a mentor and I'm never afraid to put the ego down and learn. And um, you know, I did that and then eventually, you know, the big man upstairs, you know, called to me and he said, "All right, it's it's time now." So, you know, I don't make a decision without God and and uh once God gave me the green light, that's when I said, "All right, we're going to do it." And uh we started the live streams in February and Man, it's Taking been a off. blessing. And if I could do it, anyone could do it. You know, you just got to be willing to put in the time and, you know, wait for your come up. That's it, bro. That's it. And a lot of times, just to add to that, especially when God's in it, it's not like something you just say, oh, I'm going to go do this. A lot of times you're called to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot yeah. of times it's just like it's a need there and you're like, you know what? I could definitely spend more time doing something else that I want to do. But you see the mm -hmm. need and God is leading you to do it. Like, that was me. Like, bro, when I started this podcast, I wasn't even profitable. I started this right. podcast just talking about my struggles in hopes to encourage mm -hmm. somebody and let mm -hmm. somebody know, like, yo, keep going. Don't give up. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so this, this platform here was built off of just struggling, losing, trying to get profitable, trying to make consistent money trading. You know what I mean? Trying to get to the point where... I can look and say, hey, 
if my business is slow, I know I'm at least going to make this amount of money from trading this month. You know what I mean? Mm. Trying to get oh, to yeah. that point, you know? And so now it's like God shifted the podcast because I was fine with just doing my thing, serving the people that I wanted to serve. And then God hit me and was like, yo, I want this podcast to now be a part of your business that you do for other people. I want you to start treating this podcast like a business. I want you to serve the masses and I want you to serve people that already have something going on. And I want you to highlight their stories and give them a platform to kind of speak to the beginners and not just speak to people that have already been into trading and things like that. And so when God made that shift and told me to do that, I didn't want to do it, bro. Nick, I was yeah. comfortable just waking oh, yeah. up talking on my podcast, whoever want to follow me, they can follow me. I was comfortable with taking my trades. It was less people following me. I didn't have to reach out to people and put myself out there and have to deal with rejection and, you know, yeah. all these questions, bro. I was fine, bro. You know what I mean? I was good. And God was like, you're this, comfortable. I was yeah. comfortable. And God's like, this can be so much bigger. Why are you treating yeah. this like a hobby when you already do media? That's your business. Like, that's what you do for yeah. big companies. Why are you minimizing this thing that you're doing for yourself? And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. here we go. Bro, now I'm on an interview with the, the world famous Nick. It's time to eat. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, exactly. bro, you feel what I'm saying? So oh, it's yeah. like a lot of times, man, you just got to let God lead and just don't want, like, don't, like, it's cool to have ambition. Because we all have ambition, mm. especially males. We all have goals. We see opportunities. We're like, yeah, well, if I do do this, this will be a good business opportunity. Of course, we have that there. But what I'm saying is when it comes to purpose and intention, let God lead and show you what the intention of you doing that is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And for me, yeah. I saw an opportunity to use this platform to highlight people like Nick and other people that I've had on that I'm interested in and that I, I like see something amazing in them. And it's my opportunity to bring out the goods in you guys' journey and spread that with the world. You know what I mean? And that's how mm -hmm. I serve. And that's the need that I'm meeting and, you know, allowing new beginner traders to kind of get conversations with you guys that wouldn't be able to just hit you up and be like, Hey, you know, I got this yeah. question, that question. So what's the most important thing that your wife has did that makes you feel confident? That makes you feel like, man, I'm Nick Stewart, the Superman. Like what, mm -hmm. what things does your wife do to make you feel like you are important and you are who you say you are and you are who God created you to be? Yeah. Oh man. I love that. So you know, one thing that I would say is just her commitment to my vision, right? Um, you know, she had her own dreams, she had her own goals prior to us meeting, right? If we 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 met at twenty one, so you know, someone already at that point has, especially her, who she went to college, like she had some things that she wanted to do, and you know, um, eventually when we got into the network marketing business together. And I said, honey, I really want to get this done. Like, I, I want to be free. You know, I want to be a, a millionaire. Well, my first meeting ever, man, this tall, handsome, good shape guy walking up and down the audience talking about he just came back from a Mediterranean Sea cruise with his entire family. They were there for 10 days. And I said, honey, I want that, right? Like, I can see us living that lifestyle. And she knew that I was hungry, right? And she, the, the biggest thing for me was her willingness to support my dreams and goals. Um, I think if you have a partner, it's not easy to be around a winner, right? It's not easy to be around a leader and someone who just always wants better, you know, and, you know, for her to do that and kind of lay her, her goals to the side and make her dream a part of my dream. That was the biggest thing for me. I said, I could sell out to this chick, right? I, and I said, baby, I promise you, you stay around with me. I promise you, you'd be rocking diamonds the size of cat heads, right? Come on. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, it took a little while to get the job done, but, but that was those testing grounds, right? Those were those valleys that brought a lot of value to our relationship and, and our, our dream and our vision. And I think just, you know, sitting back and kind of basically being broke together for years, and still having faith, still keeping the vision in front of us. Um, I knew right away that she was going to be the one. And, you know, she's been able to to continue to encourage me and uplift me and, you know, be my number one fan. Like even, you know, before I came in here, she'll kill it. You know, you're a winner. You're a winner. And there's nothing like a man having his having his wife say, honey, I'm proud of you. You're such a winner. 
Thanks for fighting for our family. Thanks for thanks for fighting for me so I don't have to go work a job and I could be here with my kids. And, you know, it's just that give and take, right? That that just genuine energy that goes back and forth. And um, I think that's been the biggest uplifting and the biggest help for me that comes from my wife, man. She's been just incredible. Let's go, man. That's it, bro. That is it right there, man. What a woman yeah. does for her husband is unmeasurable. You can't describe it. You just have to be in it to know what it feels like. You know what I mean? Like they are, they are the foundation of everything. If they mm -hmm. are not like, if they are not on their game, we are not on our game. That's how important they are. You know what I mean? And what they do is, and you know, like, bro, I, I walk around and I talk with the confidence that I talk with because of what my wife brings into my life and what she's brought into my life since when we were dating back in 2011, bro. You know what I mean? Like that's how yeah. much like she just makes me who I am and she doesn't even have to be in the same room as me, but she does yeah. make me who I am. I walk with confidence because of her. Right. And so, yeah. man, I just felt everything you said, bro. I felt that. Yeah. I love that, man. I, I always say like, we're like, we're like two wings on one bird. You know, we just operate in, in sync and, you know, just for her to pray for me. And that, that's really all I, I, uh, I need, right. It's just her prayers. Her prayers are strong. And as long as she's praying for me, I can go out and conquer any battle, defeat any David, do anything that I can see in my mind. I can make happen with a strong, you know, lady to back me up. So it's, it's been a blessing. This is the beginning of a great friendship, bro. I can already feel it. Like oh, yeah. for real, for real, man. So what I want to do now is. I normally say if there is a new beginner trader right now that's watching this and if there's anything that you would say to them, what would you say to them? But I'm not going to say that right now. If there is someone watching this, I'm not even going to say that. If you're three children, the mm. baby that's on the way and the two that are already here and they have children and they're sitting their children down and their children are watching this interview right now. What would you leave with them? What would you want them to know? What would you remind them of? Yeah, I love that question, man. Um, so I would just say that, you know, you're made for greatness, right? Um, Christ died so that you could live life and live life abundantly. And um, you're made for greatness and you can do whatever it is that you want, but you got to be willing to put the work in. You got to be willing to be serious, right? When it's time to work, it's time to work. When it's time to play, it's time to play. And, you know, I would tell them, you know, keep your faith first above all because your faith is what's going to drive you. Right. And, um, you know, focus in on your finances. Right. Make sure your finances are right and have fun, have fun with life. But you can't have fun. You don't put fun in front of finances. Right. You don't put fun in front of faith. Fun is the right thing at the right time with the right people because you've earned it, right? So I would just say you're made for greatness. Whatever God has put in your in your mind, you can bring it to reality. Set a plan, right? Write out a plan. Write out your goals. And all of a sudden, like I, I always like to say, write your goals, right? What What's the dream? And then write the plan and then forget about the dream and go work the plan. Just go work the plan. And everything else is going to fall together as a byproduct. Obviously, you know, treat people with respect, love one another. And hey, all things are possible for those who believe. So you just got to believe. I love it. I love it. And the reason I made that question personal, because I wanted you to give this audience something that means most to you. And yeah. that's I mean, that's everything. Yeah, belief, right man. That's, you got to believe. Everything. You got to believe. Yeah, man. Yeah, you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe, you'll never get it done. You'll never get it done, right? What the mind, you got to see it first in the mind and then start to work it in real life. And every, I always tell people everything first goes down in the spiritual realm before it ever takes place in the physical realm. So you got to dial in on what your why is and get grounded in on that and then write that plan out and just forget about that goal and just focus on working the plan plan the goal will come as a byproduct that's it and that's bro. what i tell traders too. get yourself a strategy get yourself a system get off the money right don't worry about the money right now the money is going to come by a by as a byproduct to you following a profitable system so let's get that down first and what's going to help you do that your why 
right? Because in order to follow that dis- that um that system, you got to be disciplined. I mean, really disciplined, right? You know, in trading, you have to be really dif- disciplined. It's either your setup or it's not. There's no gray area. And trading a per- from a profession to gambling, there's a very fine line there. So you got to stay on that professional side and you got to be willing to be disciplined. And what I was saying is that you have to find something that's going to make you disciplined. Mm. It's not going to be the Rolex. It's not going to be the Lamborghini. It's not going to be the new condo. It's it's something that's probably, if you think about it long enough, it's going to make you emotional because mm. the Lambo is not going to keep you disciplined day in and day out, right? But your kid's future or your wife's retirement or being debt free or being able to, to provide for ministry, whatever it is for you, you got to find the real reason why you're doing what you're doing and you dial in on that. And that's, what's going to help you be disciplined day in and day out. And as you're disciplined, you'll become a professional, you'll become good at your craft, and then the money itself will start to follow. So yeah, it works. It works in life just as much as it works in trading. So good. So good. Ladies and gentlemen, my man Nick Stewart is in the building. It's time to eat, ladies and gentlemen. Now, (laughs) let us know where we can follow you. Let us know anything you got going on to help traders. Give us all that information right now so we can stay plugged in with what you got going on, brother. Yeah, sure. Uh, You guys can follow me on Instagram. So I got uh, my Instagram. It's just my name. It's ITS Nick Stewart with an underscore. So that's what that's what my IG is. You guys are more than welcome to follow me there. If you have any questions, just you know, hit me up. I usually find time to to reply to most of the DMs, but they're getting a bit crazy nowadays with the live stream and everything. And you know, then that brings me to the to the YouTube, right? You can find us um, at Time to Eat Trading on YouTube. We do uh, free live streams every single morning. We trade the New York session from about six forty five a.m. Eastern all the way up until like 10 30 11 a.m eastern so if you guys want swing by say hello we'll be there the whole community will be there to welcome you and it's a positive uplifting environment and i couldn't be more grateful for the for the team that we've developed it, it's really an environment for growth and uh, i'm just super proud of it let's go man ladies and gentlemen y'all already know where we're going next it's your boy calvin a new trader my man nick stewart in the building and listen we look forward to running into you at the bank one day but you cannot meet us at the bank you got to beat us there when me and nick pull up you should already be walking out with a duffel bag on your shoulder big smile on your face that's our way of saying we believe that all of us will be successful so till next time god bless you take care and we will holler at you later peace